Let's join Chris Cripps, one of the owners of Better Bee, as he diagnoses a troubled hive. To get us oriented, let's look at this nice brood frame first from another hive. We see a pretty good brood pattern of capped brood. At the edges of the capped brood, there's open brood. In the upper corners, there's some capped honey. The other side also looks healthy and normal. In this troubled colony, we first noticed there was too few bees and a very scattered brood pattern. We'll methodically look at the brood cells to figure this out. First, we'll look for American fowl brood. So we look at the bottoms of the cells for melted down larvae. This is what the melted down larvae look like in American fowl brood. These are called scales. Chris didn't see that anywhere, so that's good. Next, we're looking at the tops of the cells, the ceilings for mite droppings. That's called guanine. It would be white crystals. And Chris didn't see that. A mite check yesterday showed very few mites, but we're just checking everything. Next, we look down into the cells, straight down in. So we can look for European fowl brood, sac brood, chalk brood. Cappings might be punctured or sunken if the brood is dead or dying for any reason. Open brood should be fat and white. So we're looking for yellow or brownish brood. Larvae in a twisted position in their cells, not in a nice C shape. That could be European fowl brood. This brood is hard and dry, not plump. Looks like that's some chalk brood, early stage. This capping is sunken, so let's open that up and see what's underneath it. Capping should not be sunken. Move aside, mister. It's a little yellow, so it wasn't healthy. It was dying or sick, but it was already capped so it's unlikely it was European fowl brood. That normally kills brood before it's capped. They do have some honey, not very much. And with this few bees, they're likely to get robbed soon by other honeybees and also wasps. Here's a hole in a brood capping that's off center. Off-center holes usually means the bees were tearing open a completely capped, developing brood. If this was a center hole, it would likely mean that they were just completing a capping. So they noticed something and they said, why does this one not smell right? And they started to pick it open. So let's see, kind of small, We've got a thin larva here and another one over here that's discolored. And if we look at the cappings on this cell here, there are holes in the caps as well. So let's look at this one. We can see it's off color. Remember the larva should be bright white and this one's kind of tan. We're gonna do a European fowl brood test. Be careful, American fowl brood is a different test and it will say AFB. Be careful when you order your test. The instructions are not difficult. It's kind of like a pregnancy test or a COVID test. Here we have the sample bottle, a dropper, a little spatula and the tester. The bottle has a buffer liquid and a few ball bearings in there which will break up the sample. 
This liquid should not be ingested and don't get it on your skin. So why would you ingest it? Careful when you open up the bottle. I'm choosing just a few of these suspicious looking brood. Some of the symptoms we saw made me think European fowl brood, yellowish, brownish open brood especially. But some bad looking larvae didn't have clear symptoms. So we're gonna do this test to be sure. Cap it and shake it for 20 seconds. That rattling is the ball bearings shaking around and pulverizing the sample. After 20 seconds, open it carefully and use the squeezy dropper to pull up a sample of the fluid. We're going to put three drops in the little well on the tester. And now we start to see the liquid move across the test strip. At the top is a T and a C. C means control. When the blue line shows at C, then we'll know that the test is working right. The liquid has gotten to that part of the test paper. That's the blue control line there. Now we're waiting to see if a blue line appears at the T for the test. Remember, two to three drops of the sample in the well, and then wait for the liquid to move across to the C. Keep it horizontal until a blue line shows for control, and that may take up to three minutes. If a blue line shows at the T, it means the sample had European fowl brood. So that would be two blue lines, a T and a C. There are antibiotics that can be used in that case. If a line is brown or you just see a T line or no lines, the test was a failure. You have to do it again. Our test was negative just the control line showed up, no EFB. So what does that mean for this particular hive? It means there's no need for antibiotics. We know we had a little chalk brood and some dying brood with symptoms that could be caused by general stress or simply a lack of nurse bees caring for the brood. Stress could be from lack of incoming food, loss of workers due to multiple swarms, possibly robbing, causing some bees to die and the food stores to be taken away. But since there was no European fowl brood and we didn't see any signs of American fowl brood and we saw no mite problem, we decided to choose three strong hives and we marked these frames from the stressed hive and added them to the three strong hives. Stress problems can be cleared up by just giving them added troops. So when we checked two weeks later, these brood frames were cleaned up. We saw no signs of any of those types of discoloration or perforated cappings, etc. anymore. If we hadn't been alert to this struggling hive, by that time, it's possible that wax moths would have ruined much of the comb in the weak hive, and small hive beetles could have been taking over and messing up all the good brood chrome structure. So checking hives every two to three weeks, being observant and in tune with things, saved some bees and a lot of equipment. Knowing the symptoms, signs, and tests for honeybee maladies is a key part of being a successful beekeeper.